state meeting of June 13, 2019, being held June 19th. I'm Public Advocate Jamani Williams. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Morelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Cornegie. Presente. Deutsch. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Jonai. Present. Gradenchik. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman, Lander, Levin, Levine, here, Lewis, here, Mizell, Menchaca, Presente, Miller, Moya, Perkins, Powers, Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Pre Present. <laughs> Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Borelli. Vallone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Ulrich. Matteo, Combo, Speaker Johnson. Thank you. I'm now closing the recess stadium meeting of June 13, 2019. I would like to now open the stadium meeting of June 19, 2019. Wish everyone a happy Juneteenth and ask for a roll call. Adams. I vote aye. Amprey Samuel. Is it roll call? No. Roll call. Oh, present. I mean, um, aye. <laughs> oh, present. Thank you. Ayala. I vote aye. Aye. Not present, sorry. Thank you. Baron. Borelli. I'm so confused. I, 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 think, I think I'm here. Okay. It's a roll call if you are present or not. This is a roll call vote, everyone. Sorry. This is an attendance vote, everyone. Brandon. Still here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Aki. Deutsch. Diaz. Here. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Here. Gradenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Still here. King. Ku. 
Present. Kozlowitz. Lantzman. Lander. Where would I go? <laughs> Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaka. Presente. Miller. Moya. Here. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Pass. Malone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Monsignor Kevin Sullivan, who is the executive director of Catholic Charities and is also in residence in the Roman Catholic Parish of Our Savior here in Manhattan. Almighty God, <clears throat> once more we ask your blessing upon this gathering, this important meeting in which those elected officials of this great city of New York will vote to provide the resources necessary that this city thrive, that we take care of those who are in need, that we provide for the many things that make this a great metropolis. We give you thanks for their diligence that in this time in which there is so much suspicion of those in elected office, we ask your blessing that those who have stood for office, that they be blessed. They be blessed with integrity, that they be blessed with vision. They be blessed with passion and they be blessed with ability to work together. And so we give you thanks for these women and men who do this service on behalf of all of them. And as we approach this summer time, especially bless the children of our city who will finish this school year and will have this summertime for relaxation, but also for growth, who will work. And we also ask your blessing on the new children who come to our city, our metropolis, from distant countries because they flee the violence, the extortion, the lack of opportunity in our southern neighbors. Continue to make us a welcoming city so that they might make a new life here, but not merely for them, but that they continue to enhance and make us a stronger place. Bless the families of this great city. They come in so many different shapes and sizes. They come in different varieties. Bless them all that they might be places where love abounds, where children are supported and people grow and are empowered. And yes, bless our religious institutions, that we who invoke your name, God, may not think that we are all that perfect, but bless our institutions with integrity. And when we have sinned, as my church has, bless us with the ability to correct ourselves and to humbly ask for your grace. And since it is summer, Lord, we just have kind of one more request, and you're doing a good job in blessing our New York Yankees. I might add, two places ahead of our colleagues from Boston. Could you do a little better job with the Mets? They need your help, so do that. And help us to relax this summer, and so we ask you for a special favor. Give us all an abundance of ice cream in our favorite colors and flavors with a dearth of calories. All that we ask. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, Monsignor. We can ask some prayers for my New York Knicks. That will be awesome. I, I second that. Public I now ask Speaker Johnson to spread the invocation on the record. Uh, thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. I want to thank, I want to thank Monsignor Kevin Sullivan for being here today, and I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Monsignor Sullivan has been the executive director of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of New York since 2001, and he was immediately tasked with consoling families of those who had lost loved ones on 9-11. Monsignor Sullivan has made an impact on all New Yorkers. Monsignor Sullivan is not a stranger to any of us here in these chambers. He testified last year when this council conducted an oversight hearing on the Trump administration's inhumane policy of separating, separating immigrant children from their families. Monsignor Sullivan, in the last two months, led a mission to Central America to meet with families and to meet with unaccompanied minors who have been caught up in violence and exploitation and extortion. Monsignor Sullivan is a leader in our city, and ever since, Getting back, even before his mission to Central America, he has been a strong advocate for years and years and years for immigrant families, and he has become and has been a loud voice on their behalf. Monsignor Kevin Sullivan is a mensch. I want to thank him for being here today and for everything that you do for our metropolis, for the city that you love, and for the families that call our city home. I am so honored to have you here today to spread this invocation. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We ask for the adoption of minutes. None. Message and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered pre M171 and M172. Communications from the Office of Management and Budget. Petitions and communications? One moment, sir. Finance. Preconsidered M173, communication from the Chancellor. Finance. N there are no petitions nor communications, Mr. Public Advocate. Land use call ups? None. Communications from the Speaker. Oh. Yeah, thank you. We'll now have communication from the Speaker. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Happy Wednesday to everyone who is here with us today, and welcome to our third stated meeting in the last seven days. Uh, before we get into today's agenda, I want to recognize two of our amazing sergeants at arms who sadly are leaving us to begin new chapters in their careers. Edwin Lopez is moving on to the Sheriff's Department. I want to give him a big round of applause. And Sharice Torres is going to the NYPD. I want to thank Edwin and Sharice for their professionalism and their dedication and their hard work and their time here at the City Council. We are enormously grateful for their service. We are sad for the Council, but we're really happy for the people of New York City, for the Sheriff's Department, and for the NYPD. So we wish Edwin and Sharice good luck, and we thank them for all of their hard work. Uh, and I, I'm really just grateful for, for their service. Um, I also want to I also want to mention, as the public advocate said, uh, today we celebrate Juneteenth, which is the anniversary of the end of slavery in Texas and the end of one of the darkest chapters in American history. But the work of building an America free from racial discrimination did not stop 154 years ago today. Juneteenth is a celebration of the progress we have made, but it is also a reminder of how much work still lays before us 
Let us all take today to recommit ourselves to the fight for racial equality and justice in this country, and let us never stop fighting until the day we can honestly say that liberty and justice are enjoyed equally by all Americans. Uh, now I want to move on to why we are here today, which is the adoption of the New York City fiscal 2020 budget. And as I said at the handshake, this is a personal budget for me. It is my second as speaker, and it aligns with my guiding principle, which is do the most good for the people who need it most. This city council has a lot to be proud of in this budget, but before I highlight some of the victories, there are a lot of people that I need to thank and that all of us need to thank, and I mean a lot. Adopting a $92.8 billion budget takes a team of dedicated, hardworking, knowledgeable professionals, and here at the City Council, we have an abundance of people who fit that description. I will start with my dear friend, an amazing member of the City Council, as he said at the pre-stated press conference, the Queen of Queens, our Finance Committee Chair, Danny Drum. I want to thank him for his amazing job his hard work, his dedication, his long hours, sharing those executive budget hearings. We're so proud of you, Danny. So, so proud of you. Congratulations. Couldn't ask for a better partner. I also want to thank, uh, really, just an amazing friend and colleague, someone who takes this process very seriously, but does it with a great sense of humor and a great disposition, someone who's been a leader since her time starting here in the council, uh, the chair of our subcommittee on the capital budget, my good friend and an amazing, amazing woman, Vanessa Gibson. I want to thank her as well. I want to thank the entire budget negotiating team, which was led by uh, Danny Drum. And I want to thank all of the council members uh, who really contributed to this process. I'm really grateful at the budget that we've arrived at. Uh, and I think this is a budget that we can all be proud of. And I really want to thank, this is his first budget. This is someone who I would be speaking to at 7 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock in the morning and 40 times throughout the day, someone who has a newborn baby, someone uh, who I think has done an incredible job over the last year, who is a resource, who is always available, who is thoughtful, and who really tries to work with every member here who has led the staff, I think, in a united way. I am just supremely proud of the Chief of Staff here who leads and helps run this City Council. I want to give a huge thank you to Jason Goldman, who's done an amazing job. Next, let's give uh, a, a big round of applause uh, to the entire staff of the Finance Division. They have worked tirelessly since the release of the preliminary budget in February to get through the hearings in March, the budget response in April, the executive budget hearings in May, and the countless hours of B&T and budget negotiations in June at the start uh, by thanking each member of the Finance Division individually. I want to start with the amazing Deputy Directors, Regina Pareto ryan Nathan Toth, and Paul Scamone. I want to thank our Deputy Director and Chief Economist, Dr. Ray Majeski. I want to thank his Assistant Director, Emre Adev, our Supervising Economist, Paul Sturm. I want to thank our Unit Heads, who just do such an incredible job. I'm so proud of, of their leadership and the work they do. Uh, Dohini Sampura, who is just a rock star. I want to thank Isha Wright, who always has the information at her fingertips and is invaluable. I want to thank Chima Obichere. Chima, good to see you. I want to thank Krillian Francisco, who I worked with when I chaired the Health Committee. And I want to thank John Russell, who's always showing us how to save money in the city of New York. 
I want to thank our fantastic, amazing, invaluable uh, senior counsel who was at all of the executive budget hearings, and I know I've relied upon her. Danny has relied upon her. I want to thank Rebecca Chasen for her leadership. I want to thank her team of assistant counsel, Stephanie Ruiz and Noah Brick, for their hard work. And I want to thank all of the financial analysts and economists. And I apologize. I'm a little tired, so I apologize if I mispronounce your name. It's not purposeful. I want to thank Aliyah Ali, uh, Sebastian Baki, uh, John Basil, uh, Chelsea uh, Batemore, Monica Bujak, Peter Butler, Savannah Chu, Raymond Furlong, Sarah Gastelum, uh, Hector German, uh, Julia Haramis, Lauren Hunt, Florentine Kabor, Daniel Krupp, William, I always get your last name wrong, William, I apologize, Chedera Mateng, and I tried. Uh, Kira McDonald, Caitlin O'Hagan, uh, Monica Peppel, Michelle Peregrine, Frank Sarno, Masis Sarkisian, Jonathan Seltzer, Nevin Singh, Kendall Stevenson, James Reyes, Nashia Roman, Anna Maria Camelo Vega, Andrew Wilbur, Stephen Williams, Davis Winslow, Luke Zangerle, and I want to also thank the administrative support team who do hard work all throughout the budget process as well. They may not be in us in the B&T room, but they are working hard around the clock, doing the same long hours as everyone else in the finance division. I want to thank Nicole Anderson, Courtney Summaries, uh, uh, Latina Brown, and one of the longest serving members, staff members here, an amazing, amazing woman. She, we are so grateful she is still here. She doesn't look old enough to have been here as long as she's been here. I want to thank Maria Pagan for her dedication and hard work and service here at the City Council. And last but certainly not least, our fearless leader, the person who makes it all happen, someone who knows the ins and the outs, who has done this many, many times, who has dedicated almost all of her professional career to the city of New York at the city council. We are so proud to have a finance director who is available to each and every one of us, who knows the issues inside and out, who gets in the room and negotiates, who pushes on the issues, who explains the difficulties, who gives us broader context, and doesn't just do it from February to June, but throughout the entire year with the budget modifications, with the new revenue estimates, with the November plan, with our capital budget. She leads this entire division. She does it in an amazing way. I am so fortunate that I get to be speaker with an amazing finance director like our own Latanya McKinney, and I want to thank her very, very much for her hard work. I'd also like to thank Chuck Davis and uh, Fran Della Vecchia and the entire Appointments and Investigations Unit for vetting the organizations that receive discretionary funds, as well as our entire General Counsel's Office for assisting with our disclosures. Now I want to turn to the budget itself. Because of this council, I believe our city's fiscal future is more secure. We added $250 million to our budget reserves and we invested $40 million in census outreach to ensure that New York receives its fair share of resources from the federal government. Because of this council, students will have 200 more social workers to turn to who can help them address their social and emotional health. And I want to thank Chair Traeger for his annoying and unrelenting advocacy on social workers. Because of this council, libraries will have an additional $33 million for the critical services they provide every New Yorker. And I want to thank Jimmy Van Bramer, the chair of our Libraries and Cultural Affairs Committee. Because of this council, parks will get a $43 million investment for gardeners, maintenance workers, PEP officers, urban rangers, the Green Thumb program, and we are, baseline, we are baselining 150 of those seasonal workers and gardeners. A huge investment. 
And I want to thank Lynn Kelly up there for her advocacy and the entire Fair Play Coalition for their hard work. Because of this council, our streets will be cleaner because this year we doubled the amount of funding for litter basket pickup throughout our city. And I want to thank Antonio Reynoso, the chair of our sanitation committee, for his hard work and advocacy. Since the handshake on Friday, which feels like three weeks ago, I've had some people say in reference to our budget agreement that pay parity didn't get it done. And in a technical sense, they may be right in as much as the funding is not yet included in the budget. But I challenge that premise as missing the big picture. What we have achieved on pay parity is remarkable and transformational. Because of our advocacy, this council's advocacy, unity and tenacity, for the first time, the city is on a clear and defined path in ensuring that our early childhood education workers, all of them, teachers and non-teachers alike, will be compensated equitably. These are predominantly women and predominantly women of color, and the same is true of public defenders and civil legal service providers. I, for one, am thrilled at what we've accomplished on pay parity in this city and through this budget. I also want to highlight the criminal justice work that is funded in this budget because it's an issue that is important in this moment we are living in. New York City is on the forefront of tackling systemic disparities within our criminal justice system. And I'm happy to say that $54.5 million is being included for that purpose. Some of the funding will support the expansion of supervised release now that we got the criminal justice reforms that were enacted at the state level and go into effect in January. And we're bringing Project Reset, which was borough-wide in the Bronx, we are bringing it citywide. We're creating a brand new and the first of its kind felony alternatives to incarceration court park, court part in Brooklyn with the chief judge there. And we're adding 100 uh, transitional housing beds for mentally ill male defendants to divert them from Rikers Island and get them the treatment and help that they need. We're providing the city's first major investment in programs and services for people involved in the sex trade to help them. And I want to congratulate my colleagues. We also got, and I'm sure members are going to, I didn't want to list everything we're getting. I want to leave time for members to talk about it. But we got a huge investment for the young people of New York City, an expansion of 4,000 uh, new compass slots. We restored the money on Sonic and on Work, Learn, Grow. We continue to fight for SYEP. We have been a champion for young people and for seniors through Margaret Chin's leadership as chair of the Aging Committee. We have fought for the vulnerable. We did it last year in securing fair fares. We've done it this year in the new money we've received for things that are the most egalitarian things in New York City, parks and libraries and schools, things that touch and change New Yorkers' lives every single day. So I'm really grateful. I want to congratulate my colleagues. You all did great work. Before proceeding with today's votes, I'll mention that in addition to the budget items we're voting on today, we're voting on one Article 11 property tax exemption in Councilmember Espinal and Barron's districts in Brooklyn to preserve 45 units of affordable housing. And we're also voting on Introduction 1607, sponsored by our Transportation Chair, Idanis Rodriguez, which will reduce the annual commercial motor vehicle tax imposed on taxicab medallions from $1,000 to $400. And with that, that concludes today's agenda. I look forward to proceeding with today's votes and adopting a budget that will be a champion for all New Yorkers, to everyone who works so diligently to bring us here. There aren't enough thanks to express my gratitude. I also want to mention, it wasn't in my remarks, but uh, in 10 days, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, the uprising at Stonewall which lit a match for worldwide equality in 1969 and led us on the path that we're on today. Now, I've said it before, and I know that Danny and Jimmy and Carlos and Richie have spoken of it as well, but none of us would be here today if it were not for the activists that came before us. There is still an epidemic of violence against LGBT people in the United States of America and even here in the city of New York. We still have too many people who are
becoming HIV positive. We still have too many runaway and homeless LGBT youth. There is still discrimination that exists in New York City. The council is an openly gay man, and as the only openly HIV positive elected official in the state of New York, is because of all of the trailblazers that came before me. And in this budget, and this budget, we provide funding to LGBT seniors. We provide funding to LGBT youth. We provide funding for the trans community, a record investment for that community. So I am grateful that in this 50th year of celebrating the progress we've made, but also looking at the progress that we've yet to make, this council, in a united way, has been stepping up to provide services and support to a community that is personal to me and to some of the other members of this body, and we are doing the right thing. I look forward to marching with you all, I look forward to celebrating with you all, and I am supremely grateful that in the greatest city in the world, we are adopting this budget, and we're doing it in a way that helps all New Yorkers. With that, Mr. Public Advocate, I turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure uh, I speak on behalf of all of us to joining in, in your words. Uh, we will now move into discussion of general orders. Seeing none, report of special committees. None. Reports on standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intro 1607, Motor Vehicle Tax for Taxi Cabs. Couple in general orders. Preconsidered M171 and Reso 965 through preconsidered Reso 964, various budget documents. Couple in general orders. M152 and Reso 968 and 969, expense revenue contract budget, fiscal year 2020. Couple in general orders. M153 and Reso 970 and 971, executive capital budget, fiscal year 2020. Couple in general orders. M154 and Reso 972, community development program. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered M174, fixing the tax rate. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered Reso 973, property taxes. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered LU 471 and Reso 974, Dumont HDFC. On couple, page. Couple of general orders. <clears throat> excuse me, M130 through M159, various budget documents. To be filed and at this time, I am uh, asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. We are voting on the budget today and the other legislative items and the Article 11 tax exemption that I mentioned. I ask for a roll call vote at this time. Lanceman. Thank you. Today my daughter is graduating from high school, so I need to leave. If uh, it's okay with you, I'd like to vote yes on everything and be on my way. Congratulations and approved. Yes. So um, let me also say, mm, I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that Young Israel of Hillcrest is funded in the budget. We are adopting, and I am associated with this entity. With that, just to be clear, I vote yes. Thank you. Adams. Mr. Public Advocate, I'm a proud member of the Finance Committee, a proud member of this New York City Council. Having seen my second budget through, I must congratulate our speaker publicly for bringing us to a place that we've never seen before. We have a historic budget before us. I am so, so proud to be a part of this body. I triumphantly vote aye on all. And Priest Samuel. I just want to add my sentiments and say congratulations to everyone and thank you for everything you have done um, for me and my staff. We have plenty of calls about senior housing and senior centers, and um, we've seen some real good, great wins in the 41st Council District and Brooklyn as a whole in the city of New York, so thank you for that. And with that, I have to disclose on record of the council proceeding that my whole Bridges Academy is funded in the budget. We are adopting, and my brother is a teacher at the school, and Central Brooklyn Economic Development Corporation is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my brother is associated with this entity. And with that, I vote um, aye on all. Ayala. I also want to thank the finance staff, chief of staff, uh, Jason Goldman, for all of the work and transitioning us through this process. I want to I'm voting aye, but I'm also disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that Park East High School is funded in the budget and we're, that we're adopting and my child is a student at Park East High School and that AHRC is funded in the budget that we're adopting and my partner is associated with this entity and PS57 is funded in the budget that we're adopting and my son is associated with the school as well. Thank you. Baron. Borelli. Uh, 
<clears throat> with my appreciation to the finance department for uh, another job well done and, and to the speaker for really uh, spearheading a lot of the council's priorities and being the, uh, the true uh, leader uh, of, of this city, although sometimes I disagree, I want to commend you on a, a job well done. Of course, the hand of the king over there, Jason, uh, you, you did okay too, Jason, you did okay too. Uh, I just have to disclose on record that PS55 is funded by the budget we're adopting and my wife is an employee there and the College of Staten Island CUNY, uh, they haven't fired me yet so I am associated with them as well. Uh, I vote aye on all except uh, pre-considered Reso 962, 963, 973 uh, and M174. Thank you very much. Brennan. Uh, with my congratulations as well to the finance staff, especially Tanya and my constituent Regina, um, and to the speaker for uh, really acknowledging the needs of the outer boroughs and, and prioritizing the unique needs of all the 51 members of the council. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of 962, 963, 973, and M174. Thank you. Cabrera. Aye. Matteo. Thank you. I want to uh, start by echoing the comments I made in the Finance Committee and thank the finance team. And now that you're all here, I want to thank you again. Uh, as I said, I worked with a lot of you when I was a staffer, a lot of you now obviously as an elected official, and you have made our priorities your own. You have worked tirelessly for the entire body, and uh, I want to thank you for a great job uh, under the leadership of uh, Latanya McKinney, who, who just once again did a great job leading them. I want to thank uh, Chair Drum uh, and the Speaker. It's no question that um, I don't agree with parts of this budget, um, but working with the Speaker, we've been able to increase reserves, and I can't thank the Speaker enough for working with me. Um, my delegation to, and the Staten Island delegation to ensure that Staten Island residents are not forgotten in this budget, are doing very well in this budget, um, and make sure that they improve the lives of the residents of my constituents um, and all of Staten Island. So I thank you for that. Um, I am voting no on the pre-considered tax resolutions. I know that they're not gonna reflect the numbers that will ultimately go in effect um, when the state makes it's changes, but um, today I'm voting no on 962, 963, 973, and M174. As far as disclosures, Richmond University Medical Center is being funded in this budget. My brother's associated with that. My daughter attends CSI. My son attends Susan Wagner High School. My other son attends PS30. And my kids are involved in the Summer Youth Employment Program and UAU. So with that, I vote no on 962, 963, 973, M174, and I and the rest. Chin. Just so quickly before Councilman Chin votes, I, I really want to thank the minority leader. We, we don't agree on every single issue, but he has been a very, very thoughtful voice in the budget negotiating team process. Uh, and he, along with uh, the other council members from Staten Island, uh, Councilmember Borelli and Councilmember Rose, have fought really hard for the needs of Staten Island. Relentless advocates, even when there hasn't been full agreement, they have collectively looked out uh, for Staten Island, and I'm really proud of the investment we made, especially for Richmond University Medical Center, where the council is now up to funding, I believe, almost $36 million for a new emergency room. Staten Island doesn't have a public hospital, so it is important for us to invest in one of the major hospitals on Staten Island, and the minority leader has been a really steady voice throughout this entire process, and I'm grateful for his leadership and the entire Staten Island de delegation for their hard work and leadership throughout this process process. Councilmember Chin. Thank you. First, I wanted to thank Speaker Johnson um, and Latanya, Jason, um, Doheny, and, and Daniel, and all the finance staff for all the hard work and to give us an opportunity to really celebrate the wins that we were able to achieve for seniors in this budget. I know I was texting the speaker and say, this is unacceptable, they're not giving exactly what we want. <laughs> and Latanya say, it's okay, we got your back. 
And finally, I did show up at the handshake, right? <laughs> but from the beginning of this budget process, older New Yorkers have been fighting to have their needs and voices acknowledged. And the senior investment that we've advocated for this year was defined by an inclusive vision to build a fair city for all ages. Negotiations were tough, but we were able to bring home real wins for this often overlooked population. With one in seven older New Yorkers facing food insecurity, I am particularly proud to announce that we work with the administration finally to secure a historic $15 million in permanent funding for senior center meals and kitchen staff salary, marking the first increase in five years. $10 million is going to be in this year and $5 more million in next year. And this will provide the salary increase for the kitchen staff and also the increase in food money. We also got $4 million baseline for air condition for all the senior center that are supposed to be cooling center. But the city council stepped up when Nork said that they are going to be losing senior uh, nursing services. Guess what? The city council and my colleague, I thank you uh, for allocating $1.3 million to preserve nursing service in the Norks across the city. We got a lot of amazing win, and I got a lot of uh, capital for my district, and I just wanted to thank the speaker again for your leadership. Before I vote, I do have to disclose that PS3 uh, is funded in the budget that we are adopting. My husband is a teacher at the school. I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Cohen. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, uh, Heartfelt. Thank you to the finance staff. I want to say thank you to my colleague, Danny. I want to say thank you to the speaker. Uh, and with that, I'm going to, oh, I also want to congratulate my uh, constituent, uh, Cherise Torres, uh, on joining the NYPD. And with that, I'm going to vote aye on all. Constantinidis. Just want to congratulate our, our speaker, Corey Johnson, for his great work and leadership on this budget. And of course, our finance chair, Danny Drum, and Latanya McKinney and everyone on the finance staff for all of their great work. I vote aye on all. I am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that PS85 is funded in the budget we are adopting and my child is a student at PS85 and that PS151Q is funded in the budget we are adopting and my wife is associated with this entity. Thank you. Again, aye on all. Carnegie. I want to congratulate the speaker and also um, my fan finance chair, Danny Drum, Latanya McKinney, on um, what seems to be a great budget on behalf of all New Yorkers. Um, and I vote aye on all. Deutsch. Yeah, first I'd like to thank um, the speaker uh, throughout this budget process, as well as Jason Goldman, Latanya, and the entire finance staff. Um, I know during the budget process, every time I saw one of the finance staff members in the parking lot, they m pretended to be on the phone, but they, <laughs> being that I have long legs, I end up catching up to them, and I'm um, and, uh, very proud of uh, some of the uh, wins that we received here in, in New York City. Uh, I would also like to um, disclose on the record of the Council of Proceedings that Brooklyn College is funded in the budget and we, adopt, uh, we are adopting and my children are students at the school. Uh, I also vote no on pre-considered reso 962, 963, and 973 and I and the rest. Thank you. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am disclosing on the record of the council proceeding that my son, the Bronx Board of President, uh, and the budget that we are adopting benefit the Bronx. And also, NYCHA is funded in the budget and we are that we are adopting, and one of my sons is associated with NYCHA. On the other hand, Mr. Speaker and Mr. Chairman, Today, as the speaker says, it's a great budget. It's, uh, my district is benefiting with this budget. It's like, uh, parks, libraries, and schools, and senior citizens, whatever. However, it's a great budget. Um, but there is something in the budget that are uh, contributing to expand abortion in the city. And my conscience that there is, as the long, uh, wolf cry in the desert cannot allow me to support abortion, but if I vote no, then I'm voting against the 
that everything else, but if I vote yes, then I'm promoting abortion, I cannot do that, and because I don't want to vote no to hurt people, and I don't want to vote yes to promote abortion, I am abstaining. Thank you very much. The drum. Permission to explain my vote? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Let me start off first by thanking the speaker. Uh, you are an amazing, wonderful human being, and I am so lucky to have this position, and I'm so happy that you asked me, even though I hesitated to take it, um, and to be able to work so closely with you. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Speaker. This has been an incredible two years. Let me also thank uh, Latanya McKinney for everything that she has done, for her patience, for her um, fortitude, for moving us forward, and for staying calm, cool, and collected throughout all the process. Uh, let me also thank um, Nathan Toth. Let me thank Regina Ryan. Let me thank Jason Goldman. Uh, let me thank all of the finance staff. They are amazing. Every, people say, yeah, we had to be here for the hearings. We had to be here for the uh, briefings, you know, the, after the hearings were over. But then the staff had to stay here at night and still get all the paperwork done and everything put together. So I'm really, really indebted to all of you for the work that you have done to make this budget possible. Um, you know, I just, um, it has been an eye-opening experience, and I think that this budget is a budget that is really a progressive budget, one that's going to help all New Yorkers move forward, and I think that's the reason why so many of us, I think almost all of us, got involved in politics, was to help New Yorkers move forward. So this is um, a tremendous budget. I am so pleased to be able to participate and to have this type of influence over the budget. Thank you very much, and I vote aye. Espinella. With many congratulations to our speaker, Danny Drum, Vanessa Gibson, and all the work they've done, and the entire finance staff. Uh, also to uh, my great colleague, Mark Traeger, uh, for getting that funding in the budget for our students, making sure that they have the tools they need for a, a well-rounded and proper education. Uh, I vote aye. Thank you. Eugene. I want to thank the speaker for his uh, leadership and also for working tirelessly for this budget that addresses the critical services of all our constituents and also the New Yorkers. And I want to thank also Latanya for her leadership also, for everything that she has been doing, and all the staff uh, from the finance division and Jason, and also to all my colleagues, congratulations. And I vote yes. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Commissioner Granite. Thank you so much to Mr. Public Advocate, to my speaker, and all of my colleagues. Good afternoon. This is really a great day uh, to join with all of my colleagues in voting on this budget that is truly reflective of our commitment and our priorities and values for this great city. I am so proud of our speaker and his leadership and his commitment to working with all of us. I want to thank our finance chair, Danny Drum, who has been an exceptional leader. The hours and hours from testimony from prelim to exec, Chair Drum has been there, and I really want to thank him and his staff. I also want to thank our Finance Division Chair and Director Latanya McKinney. Thank you for your work every single day. To all of the Deputy Directors, the Unit Heads, and our Analysts, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been an honor working with all of you as the Chair of the Subcommittee on Capital, as my second year chairing this subcommittee, my sixth budget here. I could not be more proud of this budget that truly invest in so many programs that New Yorkers care about, from SYEP to Compass and Census, foster care youth, fair futures, fair play, cultural institutions, the education work, social workers, Title IX coordinators, all the things that truly matter. So I want to thank Regina, Nathan, Rebecca, Isha, Doheny, Chima, Noah, Stephanie, and certainly want to thank Caitlin O'Hagan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you, Caitlin. Thank you so much. Also want to thank our Chief of Staff, Jason Goldman, for all of the late night texts. I appreciate you always responding. And certainly I want to thank my team, being a part of this budget negotiating team and being here at City Hall all the time takes me away from my district. So I want to thank my district staff and certainly want to thank my Chief of Staff, Wendy Gallegos, as well as my budget director who just completed his first year as budget director, Justin Cortez. I am proud to vote 
I on all and thank all of my colleagues for all of your hard work. Thank you. Joe Nye. Permission uh, to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I just want to begin by congratulating the speaker um, on meeting the needs of 8.6 million New Yorkers, coming a long way to helping with their pain and suffering and offering the programs that they're entitled to. It's a tremendous undertaking, Speaker, and it's been an incredible experience for me to participate in this process alongside of none other than Councilman Drum, who competed in this marathon and where he finds that energy and how he's able to stay focused is just remarkable. I want to congratulate Councilwoman Gibson. My um, compliments to Jason, the chief of staff, who still answers my phone call, hasn't blocked me as of yet, but there's always tomorrow. And I can't help but mention the finance staff, this incredible group of young men and women that do so much and make us look good because we can only do what we do because of the people that we have in and around us. So on the Latonia Kinney, thank you, staff. To uh, my chief of staff, Reggie, and budget director, Stephanie, this budget goes a long way, but I can't help but mention some of the shortcomings. In my council district, single-family homeowners have the highest effective tax rate than any other district in the city, the highest in the entire city. I cannot vote to put a further burden on homeowners, on New Yorkers who are already overburdened. The effective tax rate of $31 billion brings in an additional $1.9 billion increase in real estate real estate tax levy. And I know that in the future we have quite a bit to do, Speaker, alongside of our colleagues to figure out how we're going to bring real reform. I have to disclose uh, on the record for the council proceeding that PS 175 is funded in a budget. We're adopting and my wife is associated with the entity. CUNY is funded in a budget. We're adopting. My sons are students at CUNY. Bronx Parent Housing Network is funded in a budget we are adopting, and my brother may or may not be associated with this entity. DOE is funded in a budget we are adopting, and my sister is associated with the non for profit. And of course, this is to the best of my knowledge and recollection. Thank you. Grodenchik. Uh, very and briefly. I, oh. I didn't finish say I vote aye on all except for resolution 962, 963, 973, and accompanying reso M174. You sure you're ready? Are you done, Mark? Thank That's you. Member thank you. Um, just very briefly, uh, I just want to thank the speaker and my colleagues in Queens for supporting in this budget as they have in the past uh, the Queens County Farm Museum, which is the oldest working farm in the state of New York. It has over 400,000 visitors from every single council district, school children, except for one. We'll get them next year. Um, it does not have an education center. It doesn't have a visitor center. So uh, we've moved along down the road now uh, to uh, funding the first phase. I want to thank my colleague and dear friend Danny Drum, um, not only for starting the meetings on time, the Finance Committee meetings on time, uh, but for being totally unflappable uh, when Certain individuals refuse to provide us with uh, answers to our reasonable questions. Uh, Ms. Latana, Latanya McKinney, of course, from Queens, is a superstar, as is her entire staff, and I want to thank them for always being available. And when I see them in the parking lot, I am, they're not on their phones. Um, and I have to disclose that my son is a student at Queens College, CUNY, and um, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Holden. Uh, I also want to thank Danny Drum, who's always tired, but he, he's always here. Amazing job. Vanessa Gibson. Uh, Jason Goldman, who's on his phone now when he put it down. So somebody take a picture. Um, and uh, the great finance team. And certainly our amazing speaker, Corey Johnson, who never sleeps. Uh, I know it because I text him at 3.30 and he answers me. Um, he's an amazing, amazing leader, and he's not run running for president yet. Um, but um, I'd like to disclose for the record uh, at the council proceedings that 
CUNY is funded in the budget that we are adopting, and my son is an employee of this entity, and that the Peter Cardello, Cardella Senior Center is funded in the budget that we are adopting, and my mother is associated with this entity. Also, Unique People Services is funded in the budget and we are, that we are about to adopt, and my mother is associated with this entity. And New York Presbyterian Hospital is funded in the budget that we are adopting, and my son is associated with this entity. And the Sunnyside Community Service is funded in the budget and that we are adopting, and my mother is associated with that. Um, I, I vote aye on all, uh, with no on pre-considered resolutions 962, 963, and uh, 174 with accompanied resolution 973. Thank you. Uh, Bob, I want to be as active as your mom. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you to Speaker Johnson, Finance Chair Drum, Finance Director Latanya McKinney and staff. This budget is a win for pay parity for child care workers that have already built out universal pre-K for 4K and will be paving the way for the 3K that our city needs on our way to universal child care. Uh, we'll be feeding over a million children breakfast after the bell thanks to the restoration. Uh, stopping parks that would otherwise crumble into the river and just so much more. I am associated with organizations funded in the budget, the East 72nd Street Neighborhood Association. I count founded that organization as a council member. The Bid East 80s, I'm an ex officio steering committee member. Friends of the East River Esplanade, I'm an ex officio board member. 92A, I have been a member through a Groupon, occasionally through Fit Reserve, and I paid a drop in for Family Swim where I've been teaching my daughter how to swim. I vote aye on all. Salamanca. Thank you. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate the speaker, Natani, and the finance staff on a job well done. Uh, today, I'm also joined by my son, Aiden, who completed UPK yesterday and had a step up ceremony, and uh, we're on to kindergarten. Um, I am disclosing on the record to the council proceeding that, hold on a second, buddy, that St. Vincent's the poor resident is funded in the budget. We are adopting, and my father's associated with this entity and New York City Department of Parks and Recreation is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my wife and stepson are associated with this entity. And with that, I will eye on all. Thank you. King. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. I want to just add to the record to my sister, Latanya McKinney, I want to say thank you. When those questions got tough and we couldn't figure it out, but you helped me get through it, I want to say thank you to you for those being there for me. I want to thank you to Nathan Tolf. Um, when the Mets couldn't figure it out, you still helped me figure it out how we can move a capital project in the district. So I want to say thank you as well. To all of the finance team, thank you for your long hours and your commitment to making sure that New Yorkers are treated fairly in this budget. But more importantly, to the leadership of Speaker Corey Johnson and Jason, being able to make sure that we put money in the right places. No New Yorker should be disappointed at this budget. Even though there's more work to be done, I say congratulations to all of us who are taking home the bacon to our neighborhoods to making sure that we improve the lives to every New Yorker. For the record, I must disclose that in this budget, 1199 Service Employees International is being funded that we are adopting, and my wife is associated as the Vice President for 1199 Neva Schilling for a King. With that all being said, congratulations to us all. Happy June 10th day, and I vote aye on all. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Public Advocate, may I explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. So, first I want to thank Speaker Johnson, uh, Chair Drum, and our Queen's delegation, uh, Chair Kostovitz, uh, Chair Gibson, Jason Goldman, Natalia, and the entire finance team, especially uh, Sebastian and John Russell, and my own staff, uh, Elaine Kim, and Chief of Staff, Elaine Chong. Um, thank you for uh, everyone for their dedication to this uh, project, this, uh, uh, this budget. And I vote aye or no. Thank you. Uh, just uh, really quickly, we are unfortunately not going to be able to grant any other uh, requests to vote and leave. Thank you. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. I want to say to the speaker, I knew you were great from the beginning, 
but you constantly, constantly amaze me. Thank you for everything. Thank you for caring about New York City and the people that live in New York City. In this budget, this is my 19th budget in the City Council, and I could tell you that this is the best experience I have had doing budget. You know, it's now 4.30 p.m. We used to go home at 4.30 a.m. in the budget, and we used to work Saturdays and Sundays. So thank you, thank you for everything that you do and for caring about everybody. Thank you. And to Jason, thank you for being there, listening to all the calls, the complaints. You do a great job, and thank you. And Latanya and, and all the finance staff, you are terrific. You also amaze me in the work that you do. And also, last but not least, my deputy, um, deputy Amanda Menachini, thank you, thank you. She is the best. And with that, I vote aye. Lander. Request permission to explain. Permission granted. Thank you. First, I want to give big props and thanks to the speaker, to Danny, to Jason, to Latanya, and the whole finance team, I, Regina, Nathan, Ray, Paul Simone, lots of others helped out this cycle, so thanks to all of you. Um, I'll highlight a couple of things that haven't been talked about as much, but which are in this budget, which I think are dynamite. There's $885,000 for our reckless driver accountability program, so we can really make sure we're focused on reckless drivers and keeping folks safe. Uh, there's funding to operate uh, the shower bus for homeless families in Brooklyn, a first-of-its-kind thing to bring a sort of deep hospitality to those most in need, homeless folks who are out there without even the ability to shower, and we'll remember Lou Fiddler when that bus goes into operation. Um, and I think it's really worth uh, shouting to the rafters that there's $250,000 in this budget for Fund Abortion NYC at a moment when states in the South are looking to make it impossible for women to exercise bodily autonomy and reproductive health. The fact that we, who have long funded reproductive health, are making clear that abortion care is a critical thing and we're putting our name on it is something I'm really proud to be associated with. Um, in that vein, I'm uh, proud to disclose on the record that Planned Parenthood of New York City is funded in this budget. Uh, and my wife is general counsel and chief strategy officer there, and I could not be more proud of her for it. She's also the board treasurer of Women for Afghan Women, which is a dynamite organization in Queens that's funded in this budget. Uh, and my daughter is a student at Bard High School Early College, which is also funded in this budget. Thanks to everyone who got it done. I vote aye on all. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Uh, I want to first acknowledge Speaker Corey Johnson, Chairs Danny Drum and Vanessa Gibson, uh, Jason Goldman, Lillian Pascone, Latani McKinney, Regina Pareda Ryan, Dohini Sampura, Daniel Krupp, Julia Hermas, Frank Sarno, Paul Simone, Nathan Toth, Ebony Meeks, uh, Landley, um, Masis Sarkissian, Savannah Chu, James Reyes, Ray Furlong, Steve Williams, uh, as well as my staff, Elizabeth Adams and Jonathan Boucher, my chief of staff who was doing triple duty uh, this year as my budget director as well. Um, I want to thank the speaker and the mayor and my council colleagues for putting our communities first in this budget. Uh, and these are changes that will make a lasting impact for years to come. We achieved significant wins in this year's budget that will leave a lasting impact. After years of advocacy, we secured a major commitment in this year's budget that will bring sal salary parity to our city's early education providers, community education, community-based organizations, are core to our city's promise to provide universal pre-K, and they are finally getting the just treatment that they deserve. I just want to just acknowledge that you know this is not the most um, uh, uh, glamorous issue. It's not uh, an issue that is going to get uh, front-page headlines, uh, but this is speaks to uh, our speaker's character that uh, he put this forward as a, as a major uh, commitment by this council this year um, to make good on a promise that we make to our not-for-profit providers and through our not-for-profit providers to the children of New York City. This is 
Um, this is our way of taking care of the children of New York City by making sure that they're taken care of. And, um, and it's really a, a great testament to his, to his character and, um, and his vision for the city as a fair city and as a city that stands by our word. So thank you, Speaker, for that. Um, there's a lot of other wonderful things, bridging the gap, um, uh, as well as uh, fair futures, commitments to children in foster care, commitments to children in the homeless system. Uh, these are all uh, very important uh, 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 initiatives that we bring um, to this budget, and I'm very, very proud to vote aye on all. Thank you. Levine. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Permission to briefly explain my vote? You're welcome. Permission granted. Okay. Well, for decades, parks funding in the city has been locked in a pattern. In lean years, we cut the parks budget, and then when times were better, we didn't increase the parks budget. We just left those cuts in place. And the cumulative weight of that has been felt by all of us in parks in all of our districts. And I am thrilled that this year we have broken that cycle with an historic and, as far as I can tell, unprecedented $43 million investment in gardeners, maintenance workers, PEP officers, park rangers, community gardens, restoring forests in our natural areas. These investments will be felt throughout the city by parks in every one of our districts. And it would not have happened without the leadership of Corey Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for believing in parks. And thank you to the incredible coalition of leaders that push this relentlessly, including the fabulous Lynn Kelly, who I think is apl applauding up there in the, in the disrupting, disrupting our hearing here. But we love you, Lynn. Um, and of course, thank you to our amazing finance chair, Danny Drum, and to chair Vanessa Gibson. Uh, I am so proud to vote aye on this budget. And I do want to acknowledge on the record that um, I want to disclose on the record of the council proceedings that Columbia Secondary School, AKA MS 362, is funded in this budget that we are adopting and that my son is a student at this school. Thank you again and again, proud to vote aye. Thank you. Council Member Levin. Sorry, I forgot to disclose for the official record of June 19, 2019 stated meeting uh, that I am disclosing for the record of this council proceedings that STREB is funded in this budget we are adopting and my child is a student at this school and CUNY is funded in the budget we are adopting. My wife is associated with, the, with this entity. Thank you. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I would like to thank Speaker Johnson, uh, Chairman Drum, Subcommittee Chairwoman Gibson, the amazing finance team, and the amazing Latanya for all your work and putting together an amazing progressive historic budget that I'm so happy to participate in this year. I would like to disclose on record, um, my sister works for York College. My other sister <laughs> attends Medgar Everett College. My mom works for Brookdale Hospital. I have another sister that works at Coney Island Hospital. I know it's a lot of us. Um, and my brother works for the MTA, and I would like to vote aye on all. Thank you. Maisel. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Mizell, and permission granted. Thank you. Uh, Speaker Johnson, Chair Drum, Latanya McKinney, our fearless director, Krillian, uh, Aaliyah, Masis, Jimmy, all of the incredible finance team who have taught us so much of the, about the in depth nature of this budget and how we can grow in power. We did that. We did that together. I want to thank the Progressive Caucus, Zara, and her incredible har harnessing of the Progressive Caucus as we move this forward. Um, and also Jason, thank you so much, Jason, for your incredible work uh, to not just listen to us, uh, but to let us know when things are going to be rough and when they're going to be happy. And uh, I heard that from you several times throughout this budget process. Um, the LGBT community in, on a year like this made gains in the increase in LGBT organizations, and I want to thank the speaker for really holding that. Uh, we also saw some increases in the day laborers, the day laborers who are trying to create these beautiful centers in every borough to bring uh, health and safety training to people who are dying 
on our, our construction sites. We also saw, we saw a recommitment to adult literacy across the entire city. Knife up the incredible uh, defense system against Trump, ICE's, the rogue agency ICE uh, deportation machine got a fully funded award thanks to the speaker who went to himself and saw those, those incredible lawyers fight for us. We saw an accompanying minors get an increase too that fully funds them to make sure that every minor that comes from the border gets legal representation and the legal services to CUNY Citizenship Now. This is a real testament to the sanctuary city that we believe in. And then finally, census. Census got a 14 million, bringing it up to 40 million. That's what all the experts say that we're gonna need to ensure that we get a full count. And that's thanks to the speaker and Latanya fighting so hard to ensure that we get that. Carlina and I are gonna fight for you. Um, and then finally, this budget had 118,000 fingerprints. All the capital projects that came from participatory budgeting pro uh, districts are in this. This is a people's budget. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain my vote, please. Commission Granite. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will begin by disclosing on the record to the council proceedings that Alpha Phi Alpha Senior Center is funded in this budget and that, that we are adopting and that my mother is associated with the center. Um, I also would like to echo the sentiments of my colleagues in thanking the speaker for his leadership, uh, Finance Committee Chair Drum, Vanessa Gibson, and Latanya McKinney and her team for the work that they have done on the budget that it is equitable, it is fair, and um, for all of the residents of New York City, it protects the most vulnerable, and it is one that I am proud to vote for. I will be voting aye on all except for pre-considered Resolution 962, 963, M174, and Resolution 973. Moya. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to uh, thank Speaker Johnson for uh, making sure that uh, the most vulnerable uh, in our society here in New York were not overlooked in this budget, uh, and it's a true reflection of his leadership. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to uh, acknowledge that the immigrant community, as Chairman uh, Menchaca mentioned, uh, were uh, truly heard in this budget, especially with the program for unaccompanied minors. Uh, we see what's happening at the national level, uh, and it is uh, something that is uh, near and dear to uh, me and a lot of my colleagues here. I want to thank uh, Chairman Drum for his leadership as well, uh, to Jason Goldman, uh, but in particular I want to thank the staff. Uh, being a former staffer, I know how hard it is to work, uh, and sometimes the, 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 the days are long. Uh, but truly, uh, we appreciate all the hard work that you do, uh, and it's a reflection uh, of this great budget that we have here. Uh, and I want to take the opportunity to thank my staff, too, my chief of staff, uh, Megan Taddeo, and my budget director, uh, John White, uh, who were extremely helpful in uh, making sure that uh, we took care of the 21st Council Matic District as well. Thank you so much, and I will be voting aye on all. Perkins. Uh, I own all and congratulations to all. Powers. With a very big congratulations and a great appreciation for all the finance staff here, I vote aye. And uh, just for disclosure, the Mount Sinai is funded as part of the budget we're adopting today. My mother is an employee of this entity. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I want to thank the entire finance team and uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for all the great work that we've done on this budget. I want to thank the Jason Goldman, the Chief of Staff, um, really appreciative of all this work, how you manage the 51 council members' priorities and have us all um, uh, feel like we, we've gotten to, something in this is really extraordinary. Uh, I want to especially thank uh, Jonathan, uh, who works in the uh, in the infrastructure division, but uh, that helps us with uh, garbage. I'm, I'm glad we talk trash and you helped us out a lot, so I wanna thank you. Emre and Raymond, uh, thank you so much for the $250 million in, in reserves. I'm very proud of that, uh, and I vote aye on all. Richards. 
Thank you. I uh, just want to start by congratulating Speaker Johnson on a well thought out budget. I want to thank Jason Danny, uh, Councilmember Drum, Councilmember Kossowitz, our Queens delegation chair, um, to Councilmember Gibson, to the full finance division, including John and James Reyes. I want to thank them. I also want to thank uh, a few of our, my colleagues, uh, Councilmember Miller, Adams, and Carnegie on their due diligence and really ensuring that this budget includes funding for home ownership initiatives and then also to council member, council member Rivera uh, on this big victory uh, and what we are starting to see is community land trust uh, flourishing in New York City. Uh, so with that being said, I vote aye on all. Rivera. Uh, thank you so much uh, to Corey and to Jason and to Latanya and the finance team and my budget director, Katie Loeb, the incredible Women's Caucus, my colleagues, Danny, Vanessa specifically. This was an incredible learning experience. I am very, very proud of our accomplishments. I have to mention big wins, of course, for District 2, East Side, but also big wins in healthcare services for people in the sex trade, for abortion care, for disease prevention and treatment, and for a step in the right direction for trans health equity. Incredible funding for the young women and LGBTQ people of New York City. We want to make you proud. I'm proud of all of us here for making it happen. And I also have to add um, the disclosure, I am disclosing on the record of the council that the New York City Police Department is funded in the budget that we are adopting and they are lucky to have my mother as an employee of this entity for over 35 years. With that, I vote aye. We love your mom in the 10th precinct. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. So thank you, Speaker Johnson and Chief of Staff Jason for the great job and always being there advocating for all of us. It definitely, it, this is a great budget for the city of New York. At the local level, we've been able also to bring a lot of investment to Northern Manhattan. When it comes to Vision Zero, thank you to the administration to work together with the speaker and the staff to put back $5 million for the Vision Zero Education Awareness. This will make a big difference so that DOT will have the resources that they needed to go back as I did it two years ago, using a, a more the resources to uh, educate our New Yorkers about Vision Zero. Uh, I would like to speak also about legislation, intro 1607, that will reduce the commercial motor vehicle tax, impose a medallion tax cap from 1,000 to 400, to be equal to the commercial motor vehicle tax, impose on all other for hire vehicles. This is going to be very important for the 15,000 medallion owners. 6,000 of those are in individual that they use the value of the, of the medallion to get a mortgage, to buy the house, to get a loan, to send the kids to college. And we have seen how many of them have been committed so, suicide because they've been dealing with this crisis. So this will be very important. And I also would like to urge all, the, all our colleagues to continue working with the speaker and all of us so that we can address the crisis that is affecting the yellow taxi medallions, but also how the liberate drivers, the corporate account black cars, and the other uh, black car. Also, we need to be sure that as we will continue conversation, we separate the rights and responsibility to all those four sectors. So with that, I vote aye. King. I'd like to change my vote on Reso 962, 963, M174, and 973. I vote no and yes on all on the rest of the budget. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, Mr. Public Advocate, I don't mean to cut the council member off, but I was remiss in saying that that youth funding that we've secured both last year and this year, a uh, really historic level of youth funding on SYEP. Uh, on Work, Learn, Grow, on the new Compass slots, on Restoring Sonic, on many of the issues that affect young people in New York City, there is no greater champion than Councilwoman Debbie Rose, and she uh, has been pushing us all along the way, and I really, before she explains her vote, to give her credit for her leadership uh, on helping young people across New York City. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for putting that on the record.
And Councilman Rose. Thank you, Speaker. I, I want to say thank you to Speaker Johnson because he gets Staten Island. And that's a really hard thing to do. Um, you know, we're special. And, um, and he gets us. And he made sure that we were taken care of. And we don't have a public hospital on Staten Island. And Speaker Johnson made sure that we have gotten historic amounts for our, which amounts to our public hospital, Richmond University Hospital. And this funding cycle, over, thir uh, over $36 million in total, but this funding cycle, $8.5 million, and I can't tell you how, how grateful I am and what a difference this made to Staten Islanders. Um, my vote, um, this budget represents a budget that I can take back to Staten Island with pride. Um, the youth serv as the Youth Services Chair, I am so happy that the things that we were fighting for were achieved. We got $11.9 million added to the Summer Youth Employment Program to accommodate 75,000 young people, $19.7 million to restore Work, Learn, Grow, a program that they were trying to get rid of, $15 million in restored funding for 22,800 Summer Sonic Slots which lifted the shroud of uncertainty from the families and providers who didn't know until last week whether they would even have a summer program. And um, 14.2 million for comprehensive after school systems or COMPASS to serve 51,000 elementary school students. And this funding was baselined. So this means that families and providers will not be left in limbo from year to year, hoping that they could get um, summer programming for their children. And it will remove them as pawns. I just want to say thank you to every everybody, Latanya, Isha, Jason, Michelle, um, and all of all of the advocates. And I have to say for the record, I'm just closing on the record of this council proceeding that the New York City Department of Sanitation is funded in the budget that we are adopting and my son is associated with this entity. And I am voting no on preconsidered Reso 962, 963, 973, and preconsidered M174. And with that, I vote aye on all others. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Rosenthal. Uh, permission to explain my vote very quickly, I Mission promise. Granted. I vote aye on all. I, I just want to thank the speaker for standing strong and negotiating what is a fiscally responsible budget. I know Councilmember Antonio Reynoso is thrilled that we have an additional $255 million in reserves. Yeah, right. And that um, <laughs> it is truly, this budget is truly egalitarian. Everyone has spoken about all the great things in the budget. So I actually just want to touch on another piece of it is. I, as a member of the budget negotiating team, uh, and having been a member of the team last term and, and now this term, I've never seen such a, a group of people that is so cohesive. And Speaker, you really, uh, you, you chose well in, in who you brought in the room. People are respectful of each other, I think really hear each other. And um, there, it, it's a group that is a pleasure to work with and to fight for all New Yorkers, to fight for them all uh, together. I think we are really doing the best that we can. And of course, we couldn't do it without the help of Jason, Latana, Latanya McKinney, and, and her amazing staff. Um, I promised lasagna next year. And, um, yeah, with that, I vote aye, just really with a lot of gratitude. Thank you. Torres. I, I just want to congratulate uh, the speaker who, who I believe is the finest public servant in our city, and I think uh, we're, we're lucky to have you, and Jason, who has m probably the most patient person I've ever met. So he has had to suffer my advocacy bordering on harassment. Uh, and to all my colleagues, particularly Mark Traeger for his advocacy on behalf of social work, that's gonna be a game changer in a district like mine. And I just wanna, I, I could not think of a greater champion of public education than Mark Traeger. Uh, so with that said, I happily vote aye. Ballone. 
thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, thank you. Uh, District 19 really is dependent almost 100% on city council funding. There is no mayoral funding in our district, so all of the programs, libraries, parks, uh, are really celebrating today. So thank you and the finance team and this great council for helping that. I'd like to disclose that the St. Andrew Avellino Athletic Association is funded in the budget, and I've been coaching for 15 years now. My kids at that school, so very happy about that. The Sports and Arts and School Foundation, New York Junior Tennis League, and Citizen Schools are also funded, where my father and brother are associated with these entities. I proudly vote aye on all, except for pre-considered resolutions 962, 963, 973, and M174. Thank you. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Uh, Mr. Public Advocate, again, I don't mean to cut off uh, a council member, but I, I have to say it again. We have a historic level of funding in this budget, building on our win last year with an additional $125 million in fair student funding, which then our new education chair was vociferous and rabid about, about a year ago. And now this year, his incredible advocacy, nonstop advocacy on social workers, on helping teachers, on helping principals, on investing in schools in every possible way. He is a force to be reckoned with and the teachers of New York City, the children of New York City, the parents of New York City should, be, should feel very grateful to have a chair of an education committee like Mark Traeger and I want to congratulate him on this budget. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and kudos and congratulations again, uh, Councilmember Trigg. Thank you, Public Advocate. If there was a way to do a mic drop with this microphone, I, I would. Uh, but I, I, I want to. I, I have some words for the speaker. Just, I just want to first disclose. Uh, I'm disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that P PSK 721 is funded in this budget. We are adopting, and I am associated with this entity. I want to say to Speaker Johnson, I uh, might not be shy in advocating for public schools. Uh, but I want to thank you for listening, for leading, and for delivering big time historic levels for our public school system. I have never worked with a city leader of your stature and your position that has been this accessible, this responsive, and delivered for our schools. You are an extraordinary leader. And I'm grateful that you're the speaker of the city council. I want to thank you. I want to thank, uh, of course, our great ch finance chair, Danny Drum, who is also an educator. I want to thank our outstanding uh, uh, chair as well, Gibson. I want to thank Latanya McKinney, who I believe is the best negotiator in the city of New York and has the best poker face in the city of New York. <laughs> I never want to play poker against Latanya, I can tell you that. And of course, the outstanding chief of staff, to the speaker who made sure that we had a collaborative, inclusive process every step of the way. And Traeger could be annoying at times, I know. Thank you, Jason Goldman, for, for your outstanding leadership. Uh, I just want to say 285 newly baselined social workers for our schools. This is a historic investment, not just, I think, in New York City, but I think anywhere in America. We're literally saving and transforming the thousands and thousands of children's lives that we'll never meet. Think about that. Also, we're adding seven Title IX coordinators who will help ensure schools are free from gender discrimination, sexual harassment, and gender-based violence. We have finally baselined teacher's choice, which, yes, <laughs> this has been a fight for so many years, and the speaker delivered. We, we, we fought back the cut to breakfast in the classroom so our children could have a nutritious meal to, to, to start their day. And on pay parity for uh, early childhood educators, I want folks to know this. The mayor might have first advanced UPK, but history will go down showing Speaker Johnson saved, preserved, and strengthened UPK in New York City. Because providers were on the brink of collapse if we didn't step in in this budget. Speaker Johnson, you have saved and will save UPK in, in New York City. We're also providing over Yes, I'm closing off now. Uh, I just want to say thank again to uh, the finance team, Regina Parada ryan Nathan Toft, Ohini, Chelsea, and last but not least, I have to just get this out, Caitlin O'Hagan. This is Caitlin's last, 
It's not her last day, but this is Caitlin's last budget at the Council, and she has been an invaluable asset to the Education Committee and the Council as a whole. Her keen intellect, intuitive grasp on both the fine details and the larger picture, and is a consummate professional. She's going for her PhD at NYU. Congratulations, Caitlin, and thank you to my chief. Yes, Caitlin, thank you so much. And to my chief of staff, who's outstanding and very Council patient Member. as well, Anna Scape, Vanessa Ogle, Mary Henderson. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ulrich. Uh, I'm not going to explain my vote, but uh, I, I, want, I would like just to say thank you to uh, Speaker Johnson, uh, the, our council delegation leader, uh, Karen Kozowitz, for doing an outstanding job throughout the process, and a wonderful finance staff. This is my 12th budget. It gets better and better, although I just text Ramon and I told him I missed the days when he used to write down how much money you were getting on the yellow post it and give it to you <laughs> a week before. I mean, it was crazy, but it worked. But uh, We could go back to those days yeah, if you exactly, want. Exactly, exactly. But uh, th those, those were good days, too. He, and he was a great, uh, he is a great uh, person, a great friend. And Jason, you're doing a fine a fine job. So I want to vote aye on all with the exception of 962, 963, 973 and accompanying Res. OM 174, which I vote no. And I would like to disclose on the record of the Council proceedings that St. Francis College, go Terriers, is funded in the budget we are adopting and I am associated with this entity. Our Lady of Grace Soccer is funded in the budget which we are adopting and my daughter plays soccer on that team and she's associated and enrolled with this entity. And, uh, and again, I want to thank everybody and wish everybody a wonderful summer. Thank you again. That kind of sounded like an explanation. It, just, it did. Well, I just, I didn't ask for permission. I just did it, so, okay. <laughs> Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote. Permission, Van. Thank you very much. So, uh, I too want to uh, thank uh, a number of people, uh, the speaker, uh, in particular, uh, the finance chair, Jenny Drum, uh, Latanya, who uh, I, I know cares about many, many things, but I, uh, appreciate the fact that uh, she loves libraries uh, just as much as uh, anyone. And Alia Ali, uh, who is our uh, finance analyst for cultural affairs and libraries, who does a great job. Uh, my chief of staff, Matt Wallace, and my finance director, Kenny Madrano. Uh, this is my 10th budget, my 10th budget as the chair of cultural affairs and libraries. And between the uh, $33 million uh, increase in funding for libraries, 19 of which, 19 million of which is baselined, uh, about $150 million in capital uh, for libraries this year alone, uh, over $30 million increase to the budget for our, our cultural uh, programs, uh, also 150 plus million in cultural capital. Uh, this is a record-setting budget uh, for the things that I care about the most and uh, for which I ran and got elected to, uh, uh, to help. So uh, for libraries and culturals, uh, this is a remarkable budget and a remarkable series of victories. And I am enormously proud uh, to uh, be the chair of Cultural Affairs and Libraries uh, and want to thank again uh, the speaker and all of those uh, who support libraries, culture, and arts. It is a very, very good and historic day for the city of New York. With that, I vote aye on all, and I want to disclose on the record uh, of the council proceedings that breaking ground is funded in the budget we are adopting today, and my wonderful sister Dawn is associated with this entity, dedicating her life to helping homeless individuals. Thank you. Jaeger. I on all with the exception of resolutions 962, 963, M174, and accompanying resolution 973. Thank you. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. So you know that in the past there have been times when I've voted no on the budget. And the reason, uh, it's like that commercial that they're showing now when someone gives an evaluation and they say something is okay and the person says just okay. Well, I'm pleased to say that this is a good budget. It's not a just okay budget. I Make sure this is being recorded, Mr. <laughs> Public Advocate. I just want to say that I think that this is, this is a good budget 
when we look at all that it does, <coughs> the programs that it maintains, and when we look at how we now don't have to look next year to where we're going to find money because finance has baselined them, pushed them over on the other side and said, no, these are things that you need to guarantee are going to be accounted for. And I want to thank the speaker and his staff, all those that work with him, Finance Chair Latanya McKinney and the great staff that works with her. Uh, our Chair is Donnie De Danny Drum and Vanessa Gibson for the great work that they do and the staff that works with them. And also acknowledging that we've had an increase in the units of appropriation, which I don't know has happened before, and we're looking to see how we can make sure that we expand it as necessary in the budgets to come. And the significant increases that we have put into this budget as it regards uh, youth, social programs, the toddler programs that have been referred to, and just generally ensuring people that they don't have to worry because that safety net is there for them and those provisions are being made to make sure that they can go forward comfortably. And finally, I just want to say that I'm excited about the parity that's in this budget that makes sure that we look at how people are paid on an equitable basis. And it's significant that this budget is being passed on Juneteenth, okay? Because we want to make sure that we acknowledge that. And it's also significant that it coincides with the hearings in Washington on reparation. Queen Mother Moore used to say, pay me my reparations, and we perhaps can get these same people who are working on this budget to look at how reparations can go forward and what it might look like in the future. Thank you very much. Good work. Oh, one other thing. Uh, I'm disclosing on the record for the city council proceedings that CUNY is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my son is a student at CUNY's Mega Evers College. Thank you. I take that as high praise, Mr. Public yes, Advocate. Yes, me too, but we'd like to love to have your vote, actually. <laughs> Councilman Barron? Oh, I didn't vote. I vote on the budget, I on all, with the exception of preconsidered 962, 963, M174, and 973. Thank you. Thank you. Combo. Permission to explain my vote, Public Advocate Jamani Williams. Of course, Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you. You're looking good up there. Almost you look as better good up as here. the Majority Leader. <laughs> I want to disclose on the record of the Council proceedings that the New York City Department of Education is funded in the budget that we are adopting, and my sister is employed by the Department of Education. I just want to first start off by thanking uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for his leadership for dealing with me, for loving me through the entire process. I had so many things that I wanted to see achieved, and so many of those things were achieved. I want to thank Danny Drum and Vanessa Gibson for their tireless work in making this all achievable. As a mom, this is a particularly personal budget for me. As I drop my son off at daycare each and every day, I can't explain to you the pressure that the teachers and the administration were putting on me day in and day out to make sure that we got parity. And so I'm so proud that I'm able to walk into daycare and let them know that we achieved those really important goals and we're working to continue to bring that forward. For me as well, parks are where my son and I live. We love to go to museums and to see one of the largest increases in parks, cultures, and libraries is incredible. I know that my son, when he gets ready to go to school, will have a guidance counselor in his school. And I really want to thank at the same time, I know waking up in the morning, I can never make breakfast for my son. So when he goes to daycare and he gets that breakfast, it's like nothing in the world. I'm so proud that we were able to do that in the council for all the children throughout New York City. And the huge victory for me as well is Weeksville Heritage Center. And I thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson, the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, Jimmy Van Bramer, for recognizing that Weeksville is national black history and making sure that that continues to sustain now um, and indefinitely by becoming a member of the Cultural Institute group. They said it couldn't be done, and we got it done. And again, I also, you know, Jason, you were incredible. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank Camille because she's really the one that we should be thanking today. 
Um, and I also want to thank LaTanya. You are so incredible. And when they do the Netflix Hidden Figures documentary, I just want permission to play myself. So I want to thank my budget director, Jason Herr, and everyone that worked so hard, uh, Monica Aben, Crystal Hudson, my entire staff. Thank you so much. I proudly vote aye, and I'm so proud of this budget for working moms all across the city of New York. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. Uh, I want to thank all the council members again for their amazing hard work and advocacy and the team effort uh, here. I really appreciate uh, how all of us collectively did this work. There were a few people that I didn't thank uh, that I want to thank who again were uh, really important just to get me through this budget process and make sure that I stayed balanced and uh, on top of things. I want to thank uh, Ebony Meeks from my office. I want to thank I want to thank Ebony for her hard work. I want to thank Lillian Pascone for her incredible work as well. She's done an amazing, amazing job with Ebony. I want to thank the Chief of Staff of my district office, Eric Botcher, who continues to do a great job, and my entire district office staff. I want to thank Matt Green, my district director, Lori Hargier-Rogo, Carl Michael Wilson, uh, Brittany Bowen, um, Jordan Finer, and Patrice Comerford. They all uh, keep things uh, going well in the district that I represent. And I really, really want to thank Jen Firmino and the entire communication staff for their really, really incredible work. Uh, if we didn't thank you today, we're still grateful for you. Uh, we're grateful because, again, as has been said by other members, the council can only get to this day and to this point throughout the year with the entire staff of the city council, the finance division, but everyone who works here. And one of the people who has been uh, someone who has been holding down fort here at City Hall, everyone should know she's in charge. I want to thank Miss Cecile Scott, Cece Scott, who... Uh, keeps things going here in City Hall, and I'm really grateful uh, for for her. She works long hours here. She's usually the last one here at night locking up, and she is, and I mean this in the best way possible, she is a mother hen trying to take care of everyone, make sure everyone feels comfortable. So I'm just really grateful to the entire staff that works really, really hard here. I want to thank Sean Coughlin, uh, who makes sure that I get to things on time and that I'm taking care of myself and I'm eating food when I need to and I forget. So I just want to thank the entire staff here at the City Council. I'm really grateful for everyone's hard work. I want to thank them all. And I very, very proudly and triumphantly vote aye on this entire budget. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We were briefly joined by a former finance chair, Council Member Recchia. Uh, I want to put that on the record. And also, uh, I just want to say, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, to you, uh, congratulations again. Uh, this is my ninth or tenth budget, and you have shepherded two budgets that are truly progressive and represent this city. But more importantly, I've just been proud to see this body under your leadership become the counterbalance that it was supposed to do and be its own independent body providing the pushback when needed. So for that, I do want to say thank you. Uh, and lastly, I I'll know record my that. <laughs> it's another amount of high praise. Thank you. Uh, I do want to just uh, say thank you to, to my colleagues. Uh, up right, uh, one of the spots for me in the budget, I know my predecessor, uh, Tisha James, was one who often said, uh, talked about the budget of the Public Advocate's Office. I carried on that tradition, and I want to thank the Speaker and this body, and also the Mayor, uh, for beginning to see that and increasing the budget, uh, though I will probably be back. Uh, I just want to say thank you for that. I really appreciate it, uh, and I think it will serve the people of the city very well. With that, all items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention, with the exception of M174 plus Reso 973, which is adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, 13 in the negative, and one abstention, and which Reso 962, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, 13 in the negative, one abstention, and Resolution 963, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, 13 in the negative, one abstention. I now formally declare the Executive Expense Revenue Contract Budget, the exec Executive Capital Budget, and the Community Development Program for fiscal year 2020, all as modified and all in accordance with the relevant sections of the New York City Charter, as hereby adopted as of 5.10 p.m. on this June 19th day of June. 2019.
Introduction and the reading of the bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into general order discussions as a gift to everyone. No one has signed up. Uh, so, the stated uh, meeting of July 13th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. <laughs>